Today I'm speaking from my book, Just Enough Light for the Step I'm On. This is episode two, Refusing to Be Afraid of the Dark. Now darkness is the absence of light. Everything is dark until light is brought into it. If we don't have the true light, we live in darkness. If we have the light in us that cannot be extinguished, then we can never be in total darkness. There are different kinds of darkness, however, and we need to be able to discern one from the other. There is spiritual darkness that happens when we refuse to let God enter into our lives. There is the darkness of negative emotions like pride, jealousy, anger, or hatred. There is the darkness we experience when we make selfish demands that satisfy our flesh at the expense of others. And there is the darkness of living in disobedience to God's ways. All of these kinds of darkness come about because of our own choices. Yet as damaging as our mistakes can be, God gives us a way out of the darkness we get ourselves into. When we return to him, he restores us to the full light. Even if we foolishly and temporarily create our own darkness, as long as we have a personal relationship with the Lord, his light in us cannot be put out. When I gave birth to my first baby, the doctor told me, you have a boy. Now, I didn't forget that information and have to keep asking him over and over, what did I have? I did not wake up in the hospital the next morning and say to the nurse, tell me again what I had. I didn't call my best friend the following week and wonder, do you happen to remember whether I gave birth to a boy or girl? The minute I heard I had a son, no one had to tell me again. From that moment, I knew. An entire vision for my child's future was in place the second I was told the truth. Now, this experience is the same for every mother and every father or anyone who receives life-changing good news. God wants you to have that same certainty about him. He wants you to be so convinced of his presence in your life that even when you can't feel it, sense it, or see it, you know he is there. He wants you to be completely sure that the light of his spirit in you will never be put out. You don't have to keep looking for it. You don't have to doubt it. No circumstance can dim it. It's there for now and all eternity. And one of the ways God makes us certain of his light is by allowing us to test it in the darkness. But this darkness is not to be dreaded. It's a darkness God allows for his purposes. I form the light and create darkness, God says in Isaiah 45, 7. God sometimes allows things to get very dark in our lives in order to grow us up and teach us about himself. Think about what it's like when the power goes out in your home at night. You can barely function in the dark. You walk carefully one step at a time, reaching out for familiar things to steady and guide you until you can find a flashlight, a candle, or a generator switch. And if someone else is holding a source of light, you reach out and take their hand so you can move together. You don't take a step until you're certain that both of you are going in the same direction. And that's exactly how God uses darkness in our lives. We're in the dark until we see his light in it. He wants us to reach out for him so we can walk together in the same direction. He desires that we draw close so that we sense his presence at all times. And this is not like the darkness of evil, which you can clearly sense, or the darkness of our own disobedience, which we know in our hearts. This is a different kind of darkness, and God says there are treasures to be found there. He says in Isaiah 45.3, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Now, let me tell you from experience, the treasure we find in that darkness is him. 
And I've gone through dark times with my children, my marriage, my health, my work, and my relationships. And for many years, I didn't realize that God was using these situations to increase my knowledge of Him. Now that I look back, I realize these were the very times that I had the greatest sense of His presence in my life. And the more serious the difficulty, the more fervently I reached out to Him. And as a result, my perception of who God is grew deeper and deeper. And I discovered the amazing largeness of His love and grace toward those who walk closely with Him. Some things we can only learn in the dark. And I'm not saying that God causes bad things to happen in our lives. He doesn't. We live in a fallen world and bad things happen. But God works in the midst of even the deepest darkness. His presence and His light are there for those who open their eyes to see it. And He can bring good out of every situation. If God desires to teach us things about Himself that we will only learn in the dark, when we are walking closely with Him and He has our undivided attention, then we will be the losers if we resist Him or our circumstances during this time. The biggest mistake we can make during this dark time is to be angry with God because we're in it. People who doubt God in the midst of darkness and blame Him for their discomfort don't really know Him. If they really knew Him, they would look for His purpose in it. Often when we find ourselves in the midst of a dark situation, we immediately believe we must be out of the will of God. That might be true, but if we've been living in obedience to the Lord to the best of our ability, we are more likely right in the center of God's will. In fact, God's will can lead us into some very dark circumstances. When we find ourselves in the dark, we must stop what we're doing, look for His light, and listen for His voice. If He is directing us, yet we ignore it or fail to see it, refuse to do it or run from it, or maybe don't comprehend it, or deliberately disobey it, we will be miserably lost. We have to be still and know that He is God. We have to reach out to Him, and He will give us a sense that He is there. And when my son was a small child, every evening I read a bedtime story to him, put him in his crib, and turned out the light. And then sometimes I would lie down on the floor beside his bed with a pillow under my head, and it had a, a calming effect on both of us. We would occasionally sing little songs, but usually we simply lay quietly there together. And whenever I reached up my hand in the dark, his tiny hand always found mine and held on. It was one of those precious moments you like to remember when your children become teenagers. I think it's even more precious to our Heavenly Father when we reach out in the dark and find his hand waiting for us. But so many times, I felt alone and afraid in the darkness of my circumstances. But when I reached out to God, I always found His presence there, calming, reassuring, protecting, and loving me. I know to expect it now. I'm certain that even in my darkest times, when I can't see anything, God is there and will not forsake me. He wants us to trust Him so completely that He can take us on a journey where His light is our only light. And then when we take His hand, He can lead us anywhere. The unknown can be frightening, but when we immerse ourselves in the presence of the Lord, we can know Him in it. His love takes away our fear. When we take a step, His light is with us. When we take the next step, His light is still with us. Sometimes we stumble around faithlessly in the dark and don't even recognize His light when we have it. When we walk with the Lord, the dark is actually a place we can never fully be. The unknown is not so frightening when we realize that our all-knowing God is in it. We know Him, and once we experience His light in the midst of our darkness, our darkness will never be the same. 
If you feel like you're in a dark place in your circumstances right now, know that God has not abandoned you. You are not wandering aimlessly. He sees the path you're on. He's there with you in great power and wants you to realize how much he loves you. If you're in the darkness as a result of your own choices, confess that to him and he will lead you out of it. If it is a darkness he has created to grow your faith, then be joyful. There are awesome treasures of his presence ahead for you. Don't be afraid of the dark. When everything else around you gets darker, the light inside you will grow brighter. God will speak to you and give you illumination right where you are. He wants you to reach up and take his hand in prayer and walk every step with him. He wants you to rest in the knowledge that the light he gives you, his light that is in you, is enough light to keep you securely on the path. And when God is taking us to a place we've never been before, we envision that it's going to be better than where we are. And ultimately, that's true. But often we have to go through a wilderness to get there. God has a purpose for the wilderness, but it's hard to see it when you're in it. It can be frightening if we don't know what to expect. The most frightening thing about it is the thought that this may be our final destination. When God called my husband and me to leave Los Angeles and move to Tennessee, it was one of the most difficult things I had ever done in my life. I had to leave what I loved and what was familiar to me to go where everything seemed foreign. Not that one culture was better or worse than the other, but they were so different from each other and from the rest of the world, I might add. It was like going from Mars to the moon. And I hope that none of the good people of California and Tennessee will take offense to my analogy. But in my particular experience on this journey that God was taking me through, California was Egypt and Tennessee was the wilderness. And even though there was a lot I did not miss about Los Angeles, there were many things I couldn't let go of. And even though Tennessee is probably one of the most beautiful places in the world and home to the kindest of people, so much was missing for me. I felt like an alien and just like the Israelites did when God led them out of Egypt, I grumbled and complained. I knew God had clearly led us to Tennessee, so I was completely surprised to find myself this miserable. I thought that when God flies you out of Egypt, you touched down in the promised land. Of course, I knew that the Israelites had to go through the wilderness, but they were a bunch of ungrateful complainers. I said, Lord, why did you bring me here to the middle of nowhere? I, I grumbled. I had a life in L.A. I didn't know then that although the wilderness may seem like nowhere at the time, it is somewhere if that's where God wants you. For it's there he will prepare you for the good things he's about to do in your life. It's there you will be thoroughly convinced that you won't get anywhere or accomplish anything lasting without him. The truth is, it's not where we are in life that matters, but who is with us. And the wilderness is where we are forced to leave behind the familiar, the comfortable, the past successes, the accomplishments, and the old bag of tricks that always worked before. The wilderness is where God takes us when he wants to get Egypt out of our hearts. He wants to separate us from all that we crave so that all that we crave is him. Just as God wanted to get the taste for Egypt out of the Israelites' mouths, he wants to get the lust for certain comforts out of our appetites too. It's not that he doesn't want us to ever be comfortable. It's just that he doesn't want us to depend on the comfortable. He wants us to depend on him. He doesn't want us to love the comforts more than we love him. When God aims us in a new direction, we have to let go of what we've known, be willing to embrace the unfamiliar, and trust that he will sustain us on the journey. Now, when traveling in the wilderness... Learn to seek the abundance of a moment. Ask God to open your eyes to all the blessings he has there for you. 
And as you see each one, let them become a refreshing spring. Soak them into the dry pores of your soul. Drink them into the parched areas of your spirit. Praise him for every one and feel that solid ground at the center of his will. Oh, and remember to pack lightly. I'd say take the word of God, a measure of patience, a garment of praise, a pair of knee pads for those fervent prayer times, and an open heart to hold the living water God is going to pour out in you. Would you pray with me about this? Lord, thank you that because I walk with you, I don't have to fear the dark. Even in the blackest night, you are there. In the darkest times, you have treasures for me. No matter what I'm going through, your presence and grace are my comfort and my light. Your word says that you have come as a light into the world so that whoever believes in you should not abide in darkness. I believe in you, and I know that you have lifted me out of the darkness of hopelessness, futility, and fear. I refuse to be afraid. I confess any time I have chosen to walk in the darkness of doubt, disobedience, or blaming you for my circumstances. Forgive me. I choose to walk with you. Thank you that as I take each step, the light you give me will be all that I need. In Jesus' name I pray. You know, most of us have experienced a time when our lives appear to be standing still. No matter how hard we work, it seems like every door is closed and no new ones are opening. And often that's because we have an image in our mind of what we want to be happening. And when we see that it isn't, we think nothing is happening. I assure you that when you walk step by step with the Lord, there is never nothing happening. He will always give us everything we need for the moment we're in.